left off last time talking about the power of forgiving yourself and the other people for the roles that you cast them in in your life and also I also want to add forgiving yourself for the role that you agreed to play for other people particularly if it's something that doesn't match who you are and it's not in alignment with who you are this has been really tricky for me because, you know, last time I was talking about micro shifting and how important it is to, uh, you know, when you're going to make this massive turnaround or take a different turn or do something different that you've never done before, it can be more palpable um, if you, I don't even know if that's the right word, but it seems like it's more doable if you take small mini adjustments in order to get where you're going. Like you break this massive turn up into small parts and you just do a little bit each day. And so even though it might not feel like you're doing a lot, you are because you're making a shift, even if it's just like degrees of an inch or degrees that you're, you're moving. So once you start doing that, you start to realize around you like, wow, you know, my relationships in particular don't match where I am. And you see things about people that you didn't see before. You see things about yourself that you didn't see before. And it could be really easy to like kind of beat yourself up about it or to become angry and resentful and bitter towards the individuals for the role that they're playing in your life and who they are. And one thing that I've noticed is like when that happens for me, I take a moment and I do get lost in this a lot, but I've, I've been trying to take moments to say, Hey, you know, a year ago, this person was the best thing ever, or I didn't see any of this. And it's not that the person just overnight became this, you know, awful being that just was out to whatever and sabotage and do all this. And they didn't have your best interest in mind and they don't align with who you are. And they're all this stuff. They were doing that the whole time. But your mentality was such that you couldn't see it because of where you were. Like, that's what you expected. They were playing a specific role and you were playing a role and it worked out for whatever reason. But when you start to shift your awareness and you shift your expectation of yourself and when you start changing your environment or changing how you live your life or what you expect from life or what your values and your priorities and things like that are, you'll see where people don't line up. And sometimes they'll see it before you do. And then you might get some adverse reactions. And that's what starts to trigger those people to come up as a red flag to you as being, you know, not in your corner, not a team player, not a friend, not a companion, not an, a, a, even somebody that you want to engage with. That natural connection that you had before because you're on the same vibration is no longer there. And so it's almost like that individual will start to pick you up as being like an intruder or something. And it's like when you get an infection or something or you know, something enters the body that could cause illness and the body has an immune response. Now you're experiencing an immune response from these relationships and these individuals because you don't fit in with the little ecosystem that you were a part of. This system, this um, organic thing that you kind of created with your interaction because you don't have the roles that t in alignment anymore. So dealing with resentment about that, I really don't know what to say about that. I feel like it's okay to feel how you feel and it's actually healthy, you know, as long as you're not lashing out on those people and as long as you have a sense of like compassion for yourself, for those individuals and also, you know, just recognizing that people outgrow each other and 
just because someone doesn't fit you now or just because someone is so out of alignment with you now doesn't mean that, you know, they're awful people. It just means that you just don't match. It just means that you're not on the same page. And it's all about finding graceful and peaceful and self-affirming ways of transitioning out of those types of connections so that you can move into spaces that are going to support your growth and development. Because one thing I've noticed too, is if you don't do that, if you don't allow yourself to move into spaces that are going to support your growth and development, what will happen is like that immune response where the body starts to attack the foreign invader because it's going to harm the integrity of the thing that is, that's what you'll see. And it can come in the form of passive aggressive attacks, schadenfreude, which is kind of like getting joy off of other people's misfortunes, sabotage, gossip, backbiting, slander, and just a lot of negative energies that you don't want to have connected to you. Because they really do impact how you experience your life and how you move forward. A lot of times people say like, you know, you know, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Or, you know, people can think what they want and they can do whatever as long as they don't touch me or I don't care about this. If, if somebody has this kind of whatever towards me or, or wishes this for me. And at some level that is so true, but also... And I think this is because I am such like an energetic uh, empath. Like I just, I pick that stuff up. Um, It really does matter the kind of energies that you're in and the kind of role that you're playing for other people. You can't control everything that people feel about you. You can't control everything that people have hangups about that you trigger for them. But if you are consistently picking up that you're in situations where people are having these like existential trigger moments of self-loathing and self-hate that they're projecting onto you and you're constantly in those kind of spaces or worse, if you have found yourself in a narcissistic web of lies and deception and things like that to where people feel things towards you that are not really justified, that are not based on truth or facts. The vibration of that, even if you are protected in that, and even if you can kind of encapsulate yourself to where you don't feel that, the the way that that person experiences something because of something that's out of alignment with themselves that they're kind of connecting with you or there's something about it that creates disturbances in this the greater ecosystem of things and it's not that you should walk on eggshells around others like that's not what I'm saying at all you shouldn't walk on eggshells around other people not at all but I have seen firsthand how My not being in my truth and my authenticity has created a ripple effect that is not such a big deal for me. Like it's the the basic inconveniences you have with not being authentic and not being in your truth and having people digest you as you are. And as much as you could control that, you know, you only have such a limited amount of control over that um, because people's perceptions are their perceptions When people are taking you in from a space that is not authentic to who you are and they're having adverse reactions to it and it's creating strife and drama and chaos and enmity, that energy has to go somewhere. That energy has to go somewhere. And... If it doesn't come on you, it's going to go somewhere. And what I just thought for myself is like, you know, energy is transferable. And that's just the nature of how we're living. Like I'm thinking of this old Denzel Washington movie where it was like these, you know, these demons or whatever. And they would jump from person to person. It would just like flip, 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 flip. 
I, it's almost like that. It's almost like that. And even if it doesn't impact you, like, do you want to be a source or a conduit for that kind of energy feeding off of you in order to multiply or cause more issues in the energetic ecosystem or frequency around you? Now, here's the flip side of this. If who you are authentically and being in your truth and being in your alignment and on your purpose and who you are is going to create that, then so be it. There's nothing you can do. At that point, all you can be accountable for is being true to yourself, showing up in your power, showing up in the fullness of who you are and not being afraid to be that. And then whatever comes of that is what comes of that. But what I'm talking about is when we play ourselves small or we put ourselves in positions where we allow ourselves to be degraded or to not be respected or to be involved in a lot of, um, kind of, you know, messy situations that maybe we're not really in, but like people are colluding around you and they're attracted to it and they're creating that around you or worse, getting you involved in things that have absolutely nothing to do with you, but kind of using you as a tool and a conduit to trigger these kind of reactions in other people. You know, you just don't want to be that, that conduit, you know? And a lot of times I think we don't see that. We don't see what the result of that is because it happens outside of our view. We usually just pay attention to what happens to us directly. But when you get a chance to see how things ripple out and they impact people on a greater scale, you know, I feel like that would be an eye opening experience and it would completely change the way that, you know, we might choose to move in the world and see the value of being in our truth and standing up for what we truly believe in and what kind of energy signature we want to leave behind us. Like what is the scent of our, the fragrance of our soul that we want to live be, leave behind And, you know, just because somebody throws dirt on you or does whatever, you know, sometimes you, you can, you can't do anything about that. But if you can, if you can give yourself some dignity and have enough self-respect to remove yourself from situations like that, to recognize the role that the people may have played, but recognize that you don't want to play into the toxicity that they want to, to continue or perpetuate, or that they want you to feed within them so that they could keep feeding this energy of toxicity. You have the right to remove yourself from that. And you might experience a little bit of resistance, you know, because when you've been in a role like that for so long, and people get used to it, it's like you're pulling a lifeline away or you're pulling oxygen away from something. Like it's going to want to continue on. So long story short, it is important to just kind of be mindful of the role that other people are casting you as, especially if it leads to toxicity, if it creates chaos and confusion for other people, if it creates the energy or vibration of that around you and is being projected onto others or sent out into others, you know, make a, a, take account of that and do what you need to do to kind of like remove yourself out of situations like that. If you can, some of it you can't, but some of it you can. And, and also forgive yourself. And when you see it, it can be kind of shocking when you recognize it and you see it, especially when it's someone that you respected or if it's a relationship that's like a close family relationship or friendship or whatever the case, and you didn't see that before. But then you realize, wow, I was only feeding into the negative things that this person was feeding in their lives. Like, or this person was actually maybe feeding off of my struggles or feeding off of what I was going through wrong. So then when I start doing better or I'm not having these struggles, is it throws off the, the relationship dynamic. And, you know, it goes the, the other way as well. You know, if you have people in your life there to serve those roles in your life and you realize, you know, wow, I was being mistreated by this person or this person was such a barrier for me or they created so many obstacles and then you realize that you gave them a position sometimes that they didn't deserve and 
sometimes because of like self-deception and also just these larger deceptions on a macro level, we feel like we don't have a choice but to deal with certain people. We have to be in a certain situation. You don't have a choice. A lot of times we're railroaded and kind of cornered in to circumstances where you don't have a choice but to have to deal with very difficult people who are basically feeding you into toxic ecosystem and relationship dynamics that drain and and take away from your life force vitality and they diminish your overall sense of well-being and when you're not feeling at your best or you're not feeling connected and in balance and flow with your own soul and with the universe, then you're putting that energy out as well. And then that's got to go somewhere. And then it just becomes this eternal energy cipher thing that just takes a lot to overcome because it just, it's just become self-replicating. It's difficult to, to get out of. And as hopeless as that can sound, it's also a source of a lot of hope because it gives, it opens up the opportunity to have grace and compassion and mercy on others who show up in your life a certain way, or for when you show up in other people's lives a certain kind of way, when you can look at it in this manner and see it for what it is. It also gives you your power back to be able to say, you know what, this is what's happening. This is what's going on. I can't change everything overnight because it didn't just happen overnight, but I can make small little steps that create these tiny little butterfly ripple effects that can make a change over a sustained period of time if I'm consistent with it and I'll see the effects in my life and then I'll see it rippling around me um, and it will shift me to a vibrational frequency or into experiences that are more in alignment with what feels nurturing, what feels fulfilling, what's going to nourish my soul and what's going to make me feel the most at home, the most supported, the most sustained and nurtured. And that to me is worth it. That is worth it in and of itself. And that is what kind of gives me hope as I go little by little to make these little micro shifts to not just change my immediate environment, but also to change the quality of the relationship dynamics that I have with people around me, as well as with um, the kinds of experiences that I create around me when it comes to interacting with like-minded people that do want to have that sense of connection and wholeness and like true connection from a healthy place, a healed place. And it's not that people have to be a hundred percent healed in order to, you know, experience positive relationship dynamics, but at least have the intention that that's what you would like to experience. And so I feel that it's just really about recognizing the ways that you let yourself down and forgiving yourself for that and having compassion, recognizing the ways that other people let you down and forgive having compassion on them as well. And then also allowing yourself to have the opportunity of feeling whole, even if you're not a hundred percent healed, because the more I think about it and the more I, I live life, the more I realize, like, can you ever be a hundred percent healed? You know, is this, is the pursuit of being healed in order to feel whole, in order to feel, you know, healthy, happy, and able to experience the now moment with as much freedom and peace as you can, you know, is that need to feel perfectly together, just an illusion that kind of keeps you trapped in a cycle that will make sure you never get there or you know, is there a way to feel whole without feeling, um, being all the way healed? So is there a way to be healed without being all the way whole? So maybe that's what I'll talk about next time is, do you have to be all the way healed to feel whole? And does being whole mean that you're all the way healed? So... Thank you for joining me on this podcast and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.